Oh, hey, Matt Fails. I've been wanting to make a video. I've been too busy, by which I mean I got an old pool table, and I had to, and we moved it ourselves, and I, and I set it up, and then I'm playing pool. Like, uh, I need to save, like, eight hours a day for pool, so it's cutting into my YouTube habit. But, um, yeah, actually, I did make a couple videos respond to that. I think you introduced two really great metaphors. Hey, babe, I'm making a video. Before we go real quick because it's like three days ago these guys normally I don't really care like I have to reply but after three days and I know it's gonna be another whole two days probably so um, so you introduce really two really apt metaphors of course that's what's important about metaphors their the aptiness or aptitude and um, the one with the horse and the rider I think uh, that yeah, obviously, I, I'm not a dualist, so I don't believe that there's horse and rider. And I also don't believe in the centaur that the horse and the rider are somehow fused. It's that to me, that's that's still pretending like we have a dualism, but it's fused because we know everything's fused and we don't want a dualism, so but we get to have one anyway. And it's animals aren't like that. Animals aren't fused at it too. Animals are one. If they were, they'd still be one. So this is the way of of having two characters and, and one. You can always break things down into multiple characters, but having that dualistic one is really just a way of, of trying to say we, we have this higher self. And um, so, so my version of that metaphor is that we're just a horse. Just a horse, there's no rider. We are the horse. Um, I like that's a good metaphor. Okay, now with the paper, I would say we, we should we gotta change it a little. I think to make it a little more, a, a little more fair, you come into your class, and the paper's already on your desk with some object, happens to be a leaf, underneath. And all you get to do is choose the crayon, and you scrape it. And thou art that is right. The, the metaphysical question sort of relate to, um, can you know what that really is? Okay. Now, I say you can know, you obviously can only know the impressions. You never get to take the paper away and look at the leaf. You only know the impressions. So what can you know about the leaf itself? Well, you might say it's orange, but actually you colored that on there. You colored the orange on there. And really anything you, anything you get out of it graphically, there's going to be this element of what you put on it. And you're never going to see the thing totally in itself. Now you can keep taking you know, and this is just a metaphor, so it's not just the shape. You can take the shape in sound. You can take the shape in taste. You can take the shape, the conceptual shape, and a lot of different things besides the visual space. And you'll get more and more of these impressions. And you'll start to have a very enough information to make a pretty accurate model. But you'll never have seen behind the paper. You'll never have seen behind the paper. And, and metaphysics is a way of trying to say, no, the thing is what we think it is. And it's like, well... I mean, it's a tricky question, like, is, is it a leaf? Can, if all I can do is take these, uh, these scrapings, you know, uh, can I say it's a leaf? Well, yeah, because it's a pattern. And when I see that pattern again and again, I'm allowed to name that pattern leaf. You know, um, can I say that leaves go on trees and so forth? Yeah, these are all parts, these are all parts of the pattern. 